Good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about watertight septic tanks and what does it mean when a tank is leaking, right? Let's get into it. So, what is a septic tank? A tank is just a big concrete box that essentially every time you flush a toilet, run a sink, bathtub, you name it, all that fun stuff that goes down the drain goes into the tank. The goal of the septic tank is to basically collect all of the solids, clarify the liquids, and let those liquids escape into the drain field, right? So there's a couple different styles of septic system. You have a one compartment tank, a two compartment tank, or what we refer to in Maryland as innovative and advanced or best available technology style tanks. Each one's slightly different, but the, the main thing to know is that they almost all are either concrete or you'll get some now, now and again that are plastic, right? There's another style of tank that was used much, much further back in the past called metal septic tanks or cinder block septic tanks, right? Those are tanks that we would refer to as made on site tanks. So what is watertight? In the state of Maryland, anytime you have a septic tank, it's supposed to be watertight and it's required to be tested prior to installation. How they usually test is they'll plug it and they'll fill it with water and see, does it hold, right? So when you're designing a septic system, you're designing where on the property it's gonna go, but you also have to have a certain distance between the septic tank and the well. In our state, it's 100 feet from the well to any system of the component, right? So the tank, the front of the tank, the back of the tank, the distribution box, the drain fields, doesn't matter. It has to be 100 foot away from the well. So when you figure out where that distance is, now you gotta figure out where are we gonna put the absorption system, right? There's gonna be a specific spot on the property to deal with the liquids, and that's where it's designed to drain into. The tank itself needs to be watertight so that we don't create any kind of cavitation around the septic tank or cause any other infiltration of sewage water into surrounding wells. I've had plenty of houses that I've gone to for discolored water and it come, come to find out that somebody was doing a dye test on a tank or a discharge pipe and it just so happened that that sewage water was actually going into that person's drinking well. They just never knew it until somebody did a dye test, right? So, concrete is the most prevalent style in our area. You're either going to have a mid-seam or a top-seam tank. Back in the day, mid-seam tanks uh, generally would be used, right? And those seals are usually what goes wrong. With a leaking tank, the way that you can tell if the tank is leaking or not is by where the water level's at. Usually there should be about a foot between the top of the tank and the top of the water. The water level should always be at the invert, which is the bottom part of the outlet line, right? So you got the circle, the bottom should be where the water is. If it's any lower, that means the water's escaping somewhere, whether it be a seal on the inlet outlet line or whether it be the seal in the middle of the tank. Alternatively, you could also have the water level be too high. That means it's not draining correctly. That's a whole different beast in and of itself, right? So water level's low in the tank, right? That means the water's getting out somewhere. You could have a hole the size of a nickel and it would still drain fairly quick. Generally, how we're checking for leaking tanks is as soon as you pop it open, where's the water level, right? If the water level's super low, there's a bunch of solids, the house is occupied, it's probably leaking. If the house is unoccupied or there's not a whole lot of solids in the tank, what you do is you fill it to the correct level, tape measure, measure the total uh, height from the top of the ceiling, come back a day or two later, measure it again, see what happens, right? If you have a leaking tank, the state does not approve of that. You will have problems and the state will basically want you to replace the tank, right? You can patch it. I've not seen it be super successful, right? It's, it's possible. It's just, it's easier to just go to a top seam tank, get it done the right way, and then you don't have to worry about it for another 50 or 60 years, right? So plastic tanks are also used, but they're not quite like concrete tanks. The plastic tanks are going to be far more watertight, however, they have a lot higher risk of crush, right? If you're not installing it correctly, or if like the person's not pumping it correctly, the weight of the dirt could actually squish and destroy the tank itself. And then you run into the same problem of a, a leaking mid-seam on a concrete tank. Tanks that are completely unacceptable, uh, because they're, there's no way they're watertight, are block tanks and metal tanks, right? Metal tanks were used back in the day. They were kind of the new thing, the cool thing to do. It was steel, good stuff apparently. 
it didn't work, right? Sewer gas is super corrosive and it just chews up the metal and it basically just becomes so flimsy that you can just push your fingers right through the wall and it'll eventually collapse. In Maryland, immediately, as soon as you see a metal tank, it doesn't even matter what condition it's in, you gotta get rid of it. You can't have it, you gotta put it in a concrete tank or a plastic tank, right? Block tanks, those are a little bit more of tricky ones to find because it depends on who made it, right? Each one was made on site by a specific contractor, whoever was hired. And that's part of the reason why the state doesn't like them anymore is you have no idea how it was built, who built it, what rules or methods they use to build it, how secure and safe is that stupid thing. So no matter what, if you find a block tank, you kind of have to get rid of it and put in a proper precast septic tank. I will say that a majority of block tanks, they're almost always leaking because generally in our area, how they'll be put together, they'll dig out a big pit, dirt floor, they'll put the blocks on, they'll mortar it together, and then they're gonna put a, a coating of, of grout and cement or whatever on the face of the tank. That's what makes it kind of complicated to find. Usually the color is wrong, right? So if you're trying to figure out, is this precast or is this a block tank, the color is different. So usually that's how you kind of figure out you can also chip at the side of the wall, and if that starts to flake away, now you know it's a block tank. So that's usually how they would kind of waterproof it. It never worked, but also you have a dirt floor, so it really doesn't matter. When the uh, blocks eventually start to lose that shielding, uh, what you'll see is that center blocks are actually porous. If you go to Home Depot right now, you buy a block that's been sitting in the sun for a little bit, put a, put a little bucket in your yard, if you just put like a little bit of water, maybe like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch of water in the bucket, put the cinder block in that bucket, it'll start to suck up the water into the block itself, right? So inherently a cinder block is going to leak. It may not do it quickly, but it will do it. Usually with block tanks, I see a lot of root issues. So most of the times it's not even that you have a leaking tank that you have to deal with it. It's that the tank is literally falling apart by the time you get to it. Um, so block tanks usually go, right? Where most people will find out that they have a leaking septic tank is on a residential real estate transfer or if you're pulling a permit uh, to put an addition on the house or sometimes, sometimes the counties will make you inspect it if you wanna do like a pool or something like that. Generally, that's how you'll figure out if the tank is leaking um, unless you're actively looking at it. Most pumpers in our area, they'll just kind of pop the lid open, throw the hose in, suck it out. The counties don't really care too much if you have a leaking tank, as long as you're not pulling a permit or selling the house, that's the only time they're gonna really get fussy about it. Otherwise, nobody else is gonna be coming to your house to, to look in your tank and see, is their tank leaking? Eh, it's not gonna happen, right? But if you do have a leaking tank, at least in Maryland, right, there is a, a program called the Bay Restoration Fund. You can apply for that, and that can help homeowners get a new tank. Now. This fund was designed for homes that are on the water, right? So that would be influencing the Chesapeake Bay or any of the other, you know, waterways that connect to it, right? The goal is by going through this program, you can get these older homes with failing tanks or failing absorption systems to have the innovative and advanced technology to reduce the nitrogen in that wastewater to make it to where we get cleaner water going into the surrounding groundwater, right? Now, I've seen people be able to apply for that program in the middle of nowhere, right? You could be in the middle of, of Middletown and still apply for it and get it, right? Those systems are there to help you. Uh, if you are in the middle of nowhere, it's an as-need basis, right? So, like, if somebody is by the water and they need it more than you, they're getting it, right? You're not. Um, but it's something you can try and do. I'll have a link for that in the description below. So watertight tanks are required by Maryland. Uh, you generally will only find them when you go to sell the house or pull a permit. If it is leaking, uh, you can patch a concrete tank, uh, but it, you may not get forever out of it. It's usually better just to replace the thing. Usually if a plastic septic tank is leaking, it's got a, a break or a crack or something in the wall of it itself and you just replace it. Plastic tanks generally only last like 20, 25 years, um, but they're significantly cheaper to put in. So if you know that they're cheap and you're willing to just replace it every decade or two, you know, go for it, right? Metal septic tanks, doesn't matter. Uh, you, if you have one, you have to get rid of it. You have to put a concrete tank in. Block septic tanks, same thing, doesn't matter. If you have one, it, you're just gonna need to put in a concrete tank, call it a day, right? 
I hope that this kind of gives you guys a little bit more insight and some information into what's going on with the world of well and septic. Uh, I have more videos posted every day on this subject. If you enjoy my content, please hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you have anything that you want me to cover, like any topics that you want to discuss, leave a comment below. I try to make a response or discuss those topics for whatever anybody posts. So till next time, guys.